The following video is a Dennis the Menace production. Dennis the Menace, this name will never stick. On this episode of Is That Gonna Be On The Exam, we look at legacy systems. All right, so what is a legacy system? A legacy system is a computer system that is no longer supported by the manufacturer or is no longer available for purchase. Um, legacy systems can differ in, uh, differ in age from a couple of years to several decades depending on the model. So um, sometimes like with a new iPhone or something, um, it's not necessarily becomes a legacy system when a new one comes out. Um, so that way, I mean, technically the iPhone like one is still technically not a legacy system. System they still are able to be bought in certain places and they're still supported. However, so they're probably going. They are probably going to have um, a couple of decades until they become legacy systems. However, older computer models that uh, quickly cycle through uh, companies, especially with new technology nowadays, many um, computer companies will no longer support somewhat brand well not really brand new but somewhat new uh, technology that's maybe like five years old they'll no longer support it simply because it's just way out of date in technology standards even though it's not that old uh, age-wise all right so the obvious question is why do systems become legacy systems um, there are many reasons why a system would become a legacy system and would no longer be uh, able to be supported or no longer able to be purchased at certain places uh, the first of which is it requires very old hardware that is no longer available for purchase. So um, depending on what it is, and we'll get into the uh, how to get around this one later with um, emulators, but we'll get back to that later. Um, running on incompatible software, which you can uh, sidetrack through the use of virtual machines, which we'll also look at later. And a uh, company is no longer operational. What the last one means is the company has gone bankrupt. They're just non-existent anymore. So think of it as like if you bought a car from Ford and Ford goes out of business, then you don't get your lifetime warranty of your Ford car if you purchase that. So that's the way that can be seen. So it's that way except computers. All right, so what do legacy systems mean for the end users? Um, well, the end users in this situation are the client uh, who bought the system. So uh, when a system transforms into a legacy system, this can mean that the uh, end users can no longer get updates or security fixes. This is a very important ethical issue because these legacy systems will quickly become unreliable and security can become an issue. So if you can no longer get security fixes, your work, um, there's always a stronger possibility that um, your computer can get hacked into and your files can be stolen, which could include anything from personal information and banking accounts to just photos of yourself and your family and everything. And also it can become unreliable if it doesn't get updates anymore. It's uh, stronger chances that uh, bugs could still be in it that you haven't been able to update fix and then uh, certain th uh, aspects will crash or not work as they should properly work. So those are both very important ethical issues to consider when looking at the idea of legacy systems. Okay, so replacing legacy systems. It is extremely difficult to replace legacy systems for many reasons, including the fact that it isn't cost effective some fail and some files may not be able to be transferred, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it isn't really cost effective to go through, well, at least on a large scale for like a giant corporation or organization, it isn't cost effective to go in and just take out all of your old systems that are no longer necessarily perfectly brand new everything. Um, also, many files based on how old your legacy system is may not be able to be transferred and therefore you lose all that data which isn't good. Many people and organizations decide to keep the legacy systems they have because they operate perfectly fine and their only disadvantage is their age. So that's something to look at um, with the concept of e-waste and everything. Um, these people for instance that I was talking about here are um, saving their old legacy systems because they know they work fine and it's been working fine for them for as long as they can remember, but the only problem is it's old. So instead of just getting rid of it because it's old and get a brand new one that you're going to have to get rid of when it gets old and get a brand new one, they're just going to keep the one they have and keep using it the way they have been. Um, the United States has spent 46% of its $36 billion IT, IT budget on legacy systems, 
What this means is that um, I believe it was in 2011, the United States government spent 46 of that 36 billion dollars to go into their all their uh, organizations and replace all of their legacy systems with brand new systems. So that's just barely under half of their budget in IT is just to replace systems. It's not to try and fix anything or come up with anything new for the government to use. It's just replacing old material. So that's very, very bad. All right, so I mentioned earlier virtual machines. Well, a virtual machine or a VM creates a virtual computer inside a window, much like a regular application program. So what this does is it allows people that are trying to um, run legacy systems with outdated software, they're able to use these virtual machines to accomplish that through a new computer. Um, so a virtual uh, machine is independent of the host computer and this means that it can run its own software or operating system within the new operating system. So you can run Windows within your uh, virtual machine on a Linux computer. So that's kind of interesting to look at. All right, and now emulators are for legacy systems that require older software. So if a legacy system requires significantly older, har or hardware, I should say, I apologize, if it requires significantly older hardware, a virtual machine may not be enough, so an emulator is required. Emulators are software recreations of a system hardware, including the processor. So you can see in here, like, uh, it's a Windows, uh, on the picture here, it's a Windows um, application window. And you can see you can select NES, Sega, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Nintendo, PlayStation, all that. Those are the emulators. You can play different games that are based for those. Uh, systems on the computer even though you don't have the correct hardware it's able to allow you to do that so that's really cool and these are the sources I use to gather information for this uh, PowerPoint uh, thank you very much for watching another Dennis the Menace production video Dennis the Menace productions I can't believe that name stuck <laughs>